Coming up on this week in agribusiness, American custom harvesters reflect on the challenges of last year's drought shortened crop. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here for This Week in Agribusiness. I'm Mike Pearson, excited to look ahead to the week in agriculture. And it's a week that is full of both weather and policy. American farmers are getting ready to put that crop in the ground for the 2023 season, while harvesters had the chance to reflect on the challenges of last year's small crop. Yes, Mike, those are the folks who run south to north through the Plain States every summer, bringing in the wheat crop. But I talked about that with Dave Meisner, who is president of the U.S. Custom Harvesters, and the fact that in a drought year, things can get pretty lean. Yes, it does. I can say for myself, like last year, with the drought that we had in Oklahoma, um, I didn't have much to, to do. There was, there was a lot of wheat that I normally didn't, didn't get a get go. And, and then in the fall, I do cotton myself, and... Uh, didn't have much cotton to do because it just it got zeroed out that we didn't have the water that was needed and it it hurts every year we run into the custom harvesters out here you guys come to washington every spring why do you do that because we need to support ag we are ag we're a part of it and we need to let everybody know that we're out here um we care about our land you know we we this this land is what produces what we need to eat, what needs to clothe us, and why Why do any of us farmers or custom guys that's in the ag sector want to discriminate against this land? We need to take and make it grow. Dave Meisner of the U.S. Custom Harvesters was joined by Paul Paplo. He's another one of the officers of the Custom Harvesters Association, and I asked Paul what they are concerned about these days, the issues they are discussing with folks in Congress. Probably the top thing right now bugging our members would be the new H2 rulings that come out a few weeks ago. Uh, they changed some SEC codes, so now they're changing some of our equipment operators over to truck driver wages. So we're going from a $17 wage up to $25 an hour wages. Uh, some states are forcing overtime on top of those. So that's probably the biggest ruling right now that's affecting custom harvesters in the last probably two, three months. It's probably the biggest issue. How much does the H2A program matter to you? You know, it's about a third of our members, but it takes up about 70% of our total employment through the U.S. Custom Harvesters. You need that program. Yes. It'll be we working have, well. Yes, we absolutely need that program. It's very essential to our business. Where do those workers come from typically? Uh, for the most part, Custom Harvesters use a lot of South African labor. There is some Australian, uh, U.K. labor, but primarily I would say probably 75 to 80% would come from South Africa. Do some of these folks come back year after year after year? Absolutely. There'll be a lot of them that come back for five, six. You know, some guys will come back for 10, 15 years. I have friends who are very reliant upon that program and the, that migrant workforce. And they see these, these people are like family to them, uh, as close as family. Absolutely. You know, a lot of them come over 18, 19 years old and you watch them grow up. They come over with no experience and you develop them, teach them how to work and show them how to run everything. So by the time they go home and... You know, they might be with you 15 years, so they're like another brother to you or son to some of, some of the older people. Is it troubling that sometimes these uh, farm labor issues get wrapped up in bigger political issues and uh, surrounded by a lot of rhetoric? Absolutely. You know, a lot of this stuff should be pretty simple, cut and dry, common sense issues, but they wrap it up into total immigration issues where it does have something to do with immigration, but it's not the big picture. This is a very small picture that we're dealing with. Tell us about your operation. How does it work at harvest time? So for my operation, we run nine combines. We start in North Texas, harvest and wheat, work our way up through Montana and North Dakota, and we return to Minnesota, Iowa, and South Dakota for fall crops. Uh, we employ all American help. We don't use the H2A program ourselves, but any H2A issue creates a big issue for us because they're trying to steal from our workforce that we, we go after. So I've heard of a young men who have... Uh gone to, to join custom harvester crews in the summertime and they they look back at it and they say oh my goodness what a what a time in my life what an amazing summer that it was uh, a lot of hard work a lot of dedication but those guys that i talked to said they wouldn't trade it for anything yeah absolutely you know you very seldom talk to anyone that had a bad experience in harvest uh, you talked to a lot of people that done it as soon as they got out of high school a lot of people that wish they'd have done it when they got out of high school not a lot of those guys are 50, 60, 70 years old and wanting to do it now because they never got to mark it off their bucket list. <laughs> Paul Paplo, one of the folks bringing in the crops for farmers, not just the wheat crop, other crops too, I might add. Paul is from Ocheaton, Iowa.